All right, so today I'm going to show you how to get a non-playing character using a weapon from the toolbox. So I got Theo here. There's a distance of interest. If I break that threshold, he's going to draw his weapon. He's going to come after me, and he's going to he's going to keep coming after me until I die. Right? So I thought that would be pretty cool. Let's go ahead and delete Theo, and I'll build him from scratch so you can see how it's done. So I'm going to delete Theo, and let's go over to plugins and build rig R15. I'll do a mesh rig. All right, so we'll plop him on the ground. Now, since we got this from the rig builder, let's go open up dummy, get the humanoid root part, and then we're going to unanchor it, right? Or else he won't move. All right, now play the game. And we're going to we're going to copy our animate stuff over to our dummy so that he has movement capability with minimal work. So let's open up our workspace, workspace not players, but workspace. Simtech Gamer 7, and then look for this animate, right click, and we're going to copy. Now you have to turn the game off, or else it won't save in the dummy when you paste into. So we're going to go to the dummy, right click, and paste into. Now this is a local script, right? See the little person on there? We need this to be a server script, not a local script, because the dummy is not a player, right? So we're going to go and get a script, that's a server script. And I'm going to change this to animate, right? A and there we go. Oh, make a capital A. Make it just like, just like the local script below it. And this is tiny. We don't really need that bigger right for now, but I'll make it bigger. Double click on animate, and we got a lot of code. Do a control A to select everything, a control C to copy everything. Go to your animate script, control V, and paste it. Now we need to get rid of the chat hook. Chat hook is about line 750. It changes on updates, but look for this setup emote chat hook. Your, uh, your dummy's not going to be able to use the chat, the chat screen. So we're going to delete that. And we're going to get the stuff underneath the local animate script that you got from your player. Go from scale dampening percent down to play emote. I hit a shift and a click and that, and that selected everything. I drag it into my, my server script, right? Now we have an exact copy except for the emote chat hook. I deleted the local script. You can leave it there. It's not going to hurt anything because you don't have a player here. You have a, uh, an NPC. All right, now let's go and get a, let's see, I got that classic sword. This is the Roblox classic sword. That's a good one. So we get the classic sword. I'm going to drag it to the dummy and it's going to put it in his hand. All right. Now the problem with the classic sword or well, with anything, any of these tools is it activates by clicking on something, right? And we can't do that because it's an NPC using it. So what we're going to do in place of clicking is we're going to use a bindable event. All right. So we've got this bindable event here and I'm going to call this tool event. And I didn't put it inside the sword. So let's see, tool BE, tool bindable event. I didn't put it in the sword in case I want to swap out weapons, All right? Now we have that, that's pretty cool. Let's go and make an attack script, All right? So I just added a regular script. I'm going to call it attack so I don't forget what it's for. And I'll make this a little bigger so you can see it. I'm going to get a reference to the character, right? And that's just the script.parent. I'm going to get a reference to the humanoid root part. That's on the character. I'll do a wait for child just to be safe. Humanoid root part, right? And I need the humanoid so I can equip and unequip the weapon, right? So hum char, and that's also on the character, right? So wait for, whoops, wait for child humanoid. Now, if you get an infinite yield error, one of these is spelt wrong. Well, it could be something else too, because I'm going to also get the, the sword. Let's get the sword, right? And that's also on the char. Wait for child. And spell it classic sword. You have to spell it right. Spell it the same as the weapon you drug out. So if you drug out like slingshot, make sure it's spelled the same. All right. And now we got to get a bindable event. I'm just going to call it BE because I only have one bindable event. And that's also on the, on the char, whoops, lowercase. I'll do a wait for child. And we call this 
tool be cool beans now let's go ahead and make a function to find closest players humanoid root part i like that because it has the position on it we're going to pass in my humanoid root part the npc's humanoid root part and a distance of distance of interest all right, so we need players. We need a player service. Let's go ahead and do that. Say local players game get service players. Cool. Now we can get our players. So let's get a variable to hold the closest humanoid root part, HRP, and we'll make that nil and do a for loop, loop through all the player, loop through all the players in the game. So for I and V in pairs, here's our player service. Get children is the players. And then we'll do. But you know what? I want to make this more obvious. So V is going to be the player. So I'm going to do P-L-Y. So that's going to be each player that we we're looping through. I is not going to be used. So I'm going to make that an underscore. And then on each player, we're going to get the player char. So I'll do, I'll do a PLY char PLY character, but somebody could just be entering the game and the character won't be there yet. So we'll do a PL or PLY character added event wait, All right? Oops. I got an A in here. I don't want an A. There we go. So it'll wait if the character is being added. All right, now we need the humanoid root part. So I'll see PLY, HRP. And we can get that from the player character. All right, so we'll do a wait for child. Humanoid root part. And now let's get the distance between this player and our NPC. So I'm going to call this temp distance. I, I do this very similar thing in a lot of different videos. But I'm going to get my HRP position and subtract it from the player HRP position. And we need the distance. So we're going to get the magnitude of the difference of these two vectors. And that will be the distance. So magnitude. Cool. And then let's check if temp distance is less than our distance of interest now we're interested so let's save off the closest humanoid root part as that player's humanoid root part right and now our distance of interest we only care about players who are closer for the loop so we're going to loop through all the players now let's just look at ones that are even closer than him so i'll say temp distance there we go when we get to the end of the loop we're going to have the closest player we're going to return the closest HRP. We'll have the closest HRP and we'll return that. All right, so now down here, let's do a while loop. So while, and we'll do a quick update. We'll do wait 0.1 seconds, do. We're gonna find that closest HRP. So we'll say closest, I'm making a new variable for closest HRP. That's why I used local, All right? Find closest HRP. So we're gonna pass in hours our humanoid root part, and then the distance of interest, I'll make it 20. If we find the closest humanoid root part, then let's get our humanoid and equip the weapon. So equip tool, we'll say sword, all right? And maybe we'll have them wait a second just to think about it. And then we'll do a while. Now we're gonna have them attack. So we're gonna say while closest HRP, and the parent is the character, the humanoid is on the character, and the health is on the humanoid. So while the health is greater than zero, whoops, let's keep going after them. Let's say, hum, move to, and I'll do um, my closest HRP's position and then you can pass the second argument in for closest HRP, but we're going to, and that's, that's really good. It'll track 
this is the target whoops here we go this is the target and it'll track as long as it doesn't time out um, like if you give it two seconds to get to that move to if you move this position is no longer be is going to be valid so it'll start tracking this guy here but we're going to do an update so fast we're not going to have to worry about it so we need to swing the sword so we're going to use this bindable event fire All right so now we're going to fire that bindable event off into our character it's actually off into the workspace let's wait 0.2 seconds in between each loop iteration but it won't uh the character won't swing yet right the um what do you call it your your little npc won't swing yet because we don't have this being caught in the sword but that's all right we're going to fix that in a second and what we'll do when we're done killing the person let's go ahead and say humanoid uh, unequip tools right it'll just take off all the tools and also if there's no closest humanoid root part available if we return to nil here Let's go ahead and do that again. Let's go ahead and sheath our sword. Cool. Now this isn't going to quite work yet, but it will, right? It will. What we're going to do is we're going to go to our classic sword. We have to make a little bit of a modification. Open up the script, the sword script, right? And in this sword script, we're going to add that bindable event. We're going to say local BE and it's on the character, right? So we have a tool. The parent of the tool is the character. And then we have a tool be in there. Cool. And we could do a wait for child, but yeah, let's do that. Let's go ahead and say, wait for child. No, it's fine. It, it's, it's not, it's going to be good. All right. And then we're going to go all the way down here. You see, there's a lot of stuff in here, right? Activated is what we want to trigger. So look at that activated. But this is hooked up to the tool, so when your player clicks, if he's holding the sword, we're going to swing. Ah, but we don't have a player. We have an NPC. So I'm going to say BE event. I'm going to catch the bindable events event. Uh, yeah, event event, right? So we'll do a connect. Activated. So I'm going to, I'm going to circumvent this. I'm going to um, take the place of that with this. Right. We don't have to delete this, but what we do have to, what we do have to make sure that we, we're not going to run into any trouble. We got to get rid of player stuff, right? Because we don't have a player. We're an NPC. So let's go ahead and do a search on player. We have 26 occurrences of this. I'm going to just delete it. So it's easier to find them all. We're not going to use player for anything. So teammates, NPCs don't have teammates. We won't use the creator tag for scoring. We may add this back, but we're going to have to use a character instead of a player. All right, now we're down to 14 occurrences of player. Ah, uh, look at this. So in the blow, when you actually hit somebody, we're going to get rid of this stuff here. Just do the damage. We're down to five occurrences. Check if alive. Well, we'll still do that. We just won't check the player part. We're just going to start right out with the character part. Right. And then in equipped, we don't need to get the player either. So now if you look over here, we're down to zero matches. We're good to go. This should work. Let's go ahead and play. Whoop, I heard a, a sword unsheath. We're gonna get close. There we go. Oh, yeah, that works. That works. All right, so that's how you do it. Uh, you don't have the clickable up. Uh, Crap, you saw me. You don't have the uh, ability to click on something to swing, so you just uh, you just uh, replace that with a binder. Right?